Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this session we will dive into Kerberos authentication. Whenever you log in with Windows authentication to the server like SQL Server, in many cases Kerberos is used as a main authentication type. In short, Kerberos is a secure method for verifying the identity of users and services in network to authenticate users. So, suppose Kerberos authentication started to fail and your application cannot log in. You started to panic and want to troubleshoot as soon as possible, but you don't know how to do that because you don't understand how this authentication works internally. In this case, if you know how Kerberos functions internally, it becomes much easier for you to troubleshoot this issue. In this session, you will achieve this and become much better at Kerberos authentication. Let's get started. So, whenever a client tries to log into the server, it should first to do name resolution, right? If there is no DNS cache, it will con connect to domain controller and bring IP address for the server DNS name. Afterwards, there will be a three-way TCP handshake with the server. Following TCP handshake, servers negotiate on protocol types of authentication, NTLM or Kerberos. Often Kerberos is chosen as this is new protocol, okay, with more performance efficiency. After Kerberos is chosen, client will do TCP handshake on TCP port 88 with domain controller. Then client will send AS request packet to KDC center in domain controller. AS request, which we call authentication service request, is the initial message sent by the client to the KDC in domain controller to get TGT. This message includes the client's principal name, I mean username, and uh, may include also pre-authentication data such as password. If the username is correct and password is valid, domain controller sent back AS response. This response includes TGT key, I mean TGT ticket, and session key. Here is the important point. TGT ticket is encrypted with password of KRBGT account, and uh, session key is encrypted with client password. You might ask, what is KRBGT account? If you go to domain controller, you will see this KRBGT account. TGT is encrypted with this account's password. When the client receives the TGT, it decrypts the session key with password, and this session key is placed in memory along with TGT. Going forward, account's password is no longer required, okay? So, when the client makes subsequent ticket request, it will present TGT and creates a new authentication using the session key and the system timestamp. After getting TGT and session key, client makes TGS request, presenting TGT and service principal names of the service client wants to connect. After getting TGS request, domain controller decrypts TGT a ticket, validates the user and SPNs, if the SPNs are correctly registered and the user credentials are correct, TGT ticket are valid, okay? And domain controller response with TGS response. And this TGS response includes service ticket and session key. The service ticket is encrypted with the service's secret key while the session key is encrypted with the client session key. Here more, most important point. Service ticket is encrypted with the password of service account attached to the server. For example, if you have service account of SQL Server, this service ticket is encrypted by the password of this service account. And then session key is encrypted by the client session key. Therefore, client cannot decrypt service ticket because client can, uh, does not know what is the password of the services service account, right? Finally, by using this service ticket, client makes AP request to the server. And then AP reply is received from the server. This AP reply is often not mandatory and uh, does not happen depending on the service type. Okay, so with this, Kerberos authentication finishes. Let's now check what we learned with real-life example. This is a sample trace which I collected using Wireshark while connecting 
SQL Server with Kerberos Authentication. As you can see, first we are doing TCP handshake with SQL Server port 1433. Let's colorize TCP handshake. Okay, so that it becomes visible. After that, we are doing pre-login process. I also colorize this. This is specific to SQL Server and uh, you can ignore. Okay, so you can ignore this pre-login process. So after pre-login process, authentication process starts. Okay, here we go, Kerberos authentication. First, as we learned, AS request is being sent. One important point here. First, AS request first AS request fails with pre auth required error because client tries to communicate with domain controller without encryption first. Okay, so th therefore this is expected and you should ignore this. Okay, this is not some kind of issue. This is expected. Then afterwards, client again sends AS request with encryption this time. This request is including username, computer name, and other user credentials. After that, domain controller is responding with AS response and providing encrypted TGT ticket and session key. Then by using this session key and TGT client is making TGS request. It also includes SPN names. Finally, domain controller responds TGS response and includes service key. Okay. By using the service key, it makes authentication request request. So if you face any failure Kerber, uh, related to Kerberos authentication, just remember this flow and try to find where the failure might be happening. AS request, AS response, TGS request, TGS response. Okay. There are many flows. Just remember this flow. Okay, so I hope you found this session useful. Thank you.